Hey there, welcome back to another video. Um, this time it is a review and rant on what is widely considered by many to be one of the best horror films of 2018, Hereditary. Now, Hereditary is not a horrible film. It's not completely pointless. It's not one of those films that it doesn't have anything going for it. But for me personally, it's one of those movies that's aesthetically pleasing, that has some awesome elements to it from a technical standpoint. But when it comes to two of the most important aspects of any story or a film, the story itself and the characters... I just feel that this film really falters. I personally find Hereditary to be quite below average in that particular category. Now, that's not taking anything away from the film or anyone who thinks that this film is is a great movie. I, I, I don't I don't make these videos to try to just be the contrarian or any of that. Um, and I definitely do respect other people's opinions. So if you like the film, that's awesome. That's great. There's a lot of people who do, who thought it was just some really compelling, scary, intense movie. And they, they personally feel that the aesthetics, they, they make the film great. Or they make up for a lot of the film's shortcomings. And that's perfectly okay. But this is my opinion on the film. And in my opinion, it kind of sucks. Okay, it's not... Like I said, it's not a total piece of shit. It's not worthless. But it's far from a masterpiece in my eyes. It's far from the best horror film of the year. Especially when you have films like A Quiet Place and Mandy that came out in 2018 and it's just one of those films that while there are elements to it that I like and I appreciate immensely it just doesn't resonate with me that much because the film lacks any emotional connection I am not emotionally connected or attached to any character in this film let alone the story that unfolds. And that makes this film a real chore to sit through because I don't really care about the characters and I don't really care about the story. I don't find it to be particularly engaging. So then you have a film that just slogs and just, just goes through the motions and a slow burn thriller throwback to th films like Rosemary's Baby and so on and so forth that lacks any genuine suspense or horror because I don't care what happens to anybody in the movie by the time the movie ends. And that's just been a really noticeable and kind of sad trend I've been seeing lately in horror films that where you have horror films that are aesthetically impressive and really terrific from a technical standpoint when it comes to production and art design and direction and cinematography and those things. But when it comes to equally as important elements like characters and the story, the films tend to really fall flat on their ass. And a lot of them are these really high, highly praised horror films. And a lot of them tend to, tend to come out from this particular company that released Hereditary, A24. Um, and I don't think that's anything to do with the company itself. It just has to do with the type of films that they released. These very polarizing horror films. Now, Hereditary is directed by Ari Aster, who also wrote the screenplay. Now, Ari Aster's direction is is actually quite good. I don't really feel that's the problem it's honestly pretty impressive for a directorial debut and I'm curious to see what he does next but hopefully with a different writer this is one of those films where I feel that 
Ari should have had someone come in and lend a hand. He should not have been trying to do it all himself, especially for a first-time director. And his direction is quite great, and he does a good job with really just setting up some really impressive shots. And gets, I guess you could argue he gets a decent amount out of his actors, but then again, his own script doesn't give them a whole lot to work with, so what ultimately is there on the screen is less than impressive in my eyes. It, it's really not that. It, it At best, it's average, and at worst, it's pretty bad, especially from uh, Alex Wolf. Now, the film stars Tony Collette as Annie Graham, who is a mother and a wife and a grieving daughter who's dealing with the death of her mom and then also deals with other moments in the film that cause her grief. And Toni Collette, her performance is, I would definitely say, the best performance acting-wise out of anyone in the film. And at first, I was actually kind of sympathetic to her character, and I kind of liked her character, but then the film script throws in these, not necessarily twists, but kind of throws you for a loop with these truths about her character that I didn't really care for and ultimately hurt her character and made her character into uh, someone who really wasn't that sympathetic because of how she's still hanging on to something. Like, she's not willing to accept her own, you know, her own issues and also her own... I'm trying to think of the right word for it. For some reason, it's not coming to my head, but she's not willing to accept her own part in what's going on with the relationship with her and her son, which really hurt the film for me. I understand she's dealing with a lot of grief and loss and so on and so forth, but the film didn't really need to throw in a, this, this extra plot thread about how she was already crazy and she almost killed her son and it, it didn't really need to do that in my eyes because that honestly hurt her character from that point on Tony Collette's character really wasn't uh that engaging anymore and I definitely wasn't anywhere near as sympathetic towards her as I was initially Gabriel Byrne is a fantastic actor this is this is this is a just normal day at the office for Gabriel Byrne this is nothing special. This is nothing... Uh, th th really, honestly, his character was just the straight man. The guy who doesn't believe in the supernatural. And that's it. That's all his character was. Doesn't believe in the supernatural. Sides with the son when things are going on with the relationship between him and his mom. And that's really about it. That's all he was there to do. He's just a straight man to the supernatural... And it's a waste of Gabriel Byrne. He's a very talented actor. And he's given pretty much nothing to work with here. And then he ultimately provides nothing to the overall script and the plot. Because he just ends up as another tally on the body count. Alex Wolf as Peter Graham. Absolutely atrocious. I mean, I, I, this, this performance is really terrible. Like, this is a character that is so piss poorly written that I did not have any sympathy for him. Except for that one moment when he, he, his mother is giving him a hard time and doesn't understand that her actions in the past are the reason why he's so tentative to her in the present. But that didn't last very long because the reason why all these crazy shit was happening and why the mother had to deal with even more grief on top of the loss of her mother was because her, her son was a fucking dumbass. He's a dipshit teenager who 
uh, he he really on, honestly has two modes. It's either whiny emo teen or he's going to cry. So he's crying or he's being emo and he's and it's just it, there's no in between with this character and with this performance. He spent more time thinking about ways that he's going to get high and get laid than anything else throughout most of this movie and then the film dares to try to make you sympathetic towards this character which is an absolutely fatal flaw hereditary does not recover from this decision you have a character played by alex wolf who's not likable peter graham is not a likable character uh, he is the main catalyst to what happened to his sister because he's not thinking things through and he goes about it in a way that is very similar to a sociopath. I mean, spoilers, but he he fucking leaves his his sister's decapitated body in the back seat of the van and just leaves it in the fucking driveway for his distraught harried mother who's trying to cope with things the best she can with the loss of her own mom and now here comes her fucking son who has i guess all the emotional uh, uh capability of a fucking sociopath who fucking does that and this was before he was supposedly possessed so it's one of those things that's like Ari Aster really needed someone to be like, hey, this is way out of left field. This does not make this character someone that the audience cares about. And if you're going to have this character be the final character in the end, and you're going to have this suspenseful, crazy, built, crazy ending where things really explode and, and go into just insane crazy lengths you need to have a character that the audience connects with and this is not that character so when you get to the ending when the film desperately needs suspense there is none there's absolutely zero suspense because i do not care what happens to peter i don't care if he gets possessed by the all eight demons of hell and then gets ass fucked by satan himself i don't give a shit because this guy is a really shitty character and delivered a pretty shitty performance too then you have millie shapiro who plays charlie uh the 13 year old daughter who she's fine uh it's it's a it's a solid it's a it's a decent performance She's definitely got some developmental issues and is a little out there. Uh, and, and I got to give the film credit for going where it did with with the death scene of Charlie. But it's just so poorly written. It, it all of a sudden... Is, for First off, she should not have been at some party for uh, a high school teenager to begin with. I mean, an underage sister at a high school party yeah that's not a good idea anytime not only in this movie but in real life and in any instance whatsoever uh bad shit is bound to happen so she gets she's uh the film gives away that something's going to happen with her with her or her, her allergies because ari aster needs a little more work when it comes to screenwriting i'm sorry he's not this perfect screenwriter who wrote this perfect story uh I, I don't buy it like when you have tells like this where the mother is saying oh make sure uh she's not eating something with peanuts like you know that some, that's gonna come into play later and it did uh because the the because peter is too busy thinking about his pecker and thinking about ways that he can smoke up and get blazed he he just leaves his sister there at the party unattended basically allows her to eat a random piece of not basically he does allow her to eat a random piece of cake doesn't even check what the ingredients are she ends up having an anaphylactic 
shock reaction to the peanuts in the chocolate cake and then like a an e just just to make this character even more amazing and even more likable he doesn't call 911 as soon as she has a reaction he puts he, t he just takes her into his car and starts driving away and he rolls down the window so she can get some air yeah that doesn't make any sense i, I mean Ari, think about this. I understand your film is dealing with the supernatural and so on and so forth, but this is this is so far out there even for for a supernatural film. I mean, am I supposed to believe that somebody's actually going to make decisions this stupid and act like this in real life? I'm sorry, I don't believe I don't believe it. I don't buy it. it. Comes across as extremely forced, and I mean, she's suffocating. She's choking. Rolling down the window isn't going to do anything. So she sticks her head out the window, which should have never happened if her brother had a brain. And she ultimately ends up getting de decapitated by a telephone pole. And it's a pretty intense scene, and I give the film credit for that. But the scene is dampened and hurt by bad writing. And also... It's really damaged beyond repair by the film's ending. Because the film's ending is just basically trying to say that, well, this was all destined from the beginning, and Charlie needed to die, so this fucking demon cult that uh, Tony Collette's character, Annie, her, her mother, was a part of, and so this demon cult needed to find a body for Paimon, this eighth demon king of hell. And it couldn't be a, it cannot be a girl, but old, but they fucked up and the demon ended up in the body of Charlie. And that's why she's acting so weird. And well, they needed her to die so that they could get the demon into the body of Peter, which who was the original choice, who was the one that they wanted to be, because they, they needed it to be in, 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 to, in the body of, of a boy. And so I'm like, so I'm supposed to believe that this demon cult set this whole thing up. They had this overcomplicated, overly complex plan to kill Charlie. Like, I'm supposed to believe that, that they were the ones that caused this all to happen. Okay, they, they made it so the son was so obsessed with this girl from school and also equally as obsessed with getting high and they made it so the mother would uh, allow her teenage son to take her underage daughter to a high school party and then on top of that they planted a chocolate cake with peanuts and shit in it so then the the, the girl charlie would eat it and have a reaction to it then they also apparently predicted or through magic powers and cult abilities and through power given to them straight by old horn old horny one himself the devil or one of those or one of the eight demon kings and maybe paymon gave them uh, the ability to do this so oh 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 so now they also made it so the the son is stupid and doesn't call 911 as soon as the 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 sister is having a reaction and they made it so he would be he would be even more dumb and roll down the window for her and then they placed a dead deer or or I, I think it was dead even if it was dead or alive it doesn't matter so they put a fucking deer in the middle of the road at the exact point that the, the sun was going to drive down the, the same road where this deer is and then they knew that he was going to swerve out of the out of the way and they knew there was a telephone pole there that charlie's head was going to hit give me a fucking break i'm sorry this is too overly complicated i i can turn off my brain i can i can buy supernatural shit going on in a movie like this but th that's I draw the line with that with that. I'm sorry. And the reason why is because you take yourself so fucking seriously. If you are going to try to root yourself into reality as much as hereditary does 
and have all this subtext and have all these themes and have all these things about grief and loss and about inheriting your own personal demons, then you have no business having this kind of ridiculously unrealistic shit in your movie. I'm sorry. And I don't buy that the film should get a pass either for its explanation of, well, they were all cursed. They were all cursed from the beginning. So all of this was destined to happen. That's just a, that's just a cop out to me. I'm sorry. And it doesn't matter if, if it's some critically acclaimed film or it's some bottom the barrel directed video movie. That's a cop out every single time. I don't I, I don't think that should be acceptable. That's not an acceptable form of storytelling. I'm sorry. That's just an excuse for a writer to not really put their best effort into their screenplay where they could just be like, well, anything that could uh, potentially undermine what I'm doing or anything where any moment where the film um, the story breaks its own rules, like with what happened between Annie and Steve with, with the book. So the, see the art book was Charlie's book and she's sketched in it. That's supposed to be a cursed item and Charlie's spirit is connected to it apparently. And in order to get her out of the house, and of course, what you find out, it's not really Charlie. It's probably Paymon, but whatever. In order to try to get her out, you have to throw the cursed item into the fire. Where, well, earlier in the film, well, not, not earlier, about an hour or so into the film, or a little bit after that, she uh, Annie throws the cursed item into the fire, and she starts to, she starts to ignite in flames. So then she takes it out of the fire. And then later in the film, near the climax, she forces her husband to throw the book into the fire. So she forces Steve to do that. And then Steve is the one that just becomes a great giant ball of fire and dies. And I guess because you saw like this little light that flew around the room, what this is just one of those things where it's like, Oh, the film sets up its own rules in a certain way. And then because of the fact that they're all cursed by some demon, it doesn't matter, you know, you could have fucking monkeys come out of, uh, out of Steve's ass, and then, you know, oh, well, that's, that's fine, because it was, it was destined to happen, I mean, and a lot of the time, you will see this type of story get absolutely roasted by mainstream media and by critics, and not get a pass, but for some reason, some critics are selective where it's like, well, in this case, it's OK. Why? If it's not, if it's not OK in, in one instance, it should not be OK in another. I'm sorry. Have some fucking consistency as a, as a critic. I know it's difficult because even I have had my moments where I was I was being hypocritical or I, you know, I've said I went against some of my personal uh leanings but at the same time i i'm at least aware of that and i'm trying to do things to fix that and i don't see some critics doing that they're just very selective on things they're just like well because i love this movie and i thought it was great i'll give it a pass but even in a film that i like i'd still mention that and be like you know what this is kind of what hurt the film for me i mean this kind of stuff where you're just like, well, it's, they were cursed. So then why, why, why even tell me this story? Why, why, why? What's the point of this story? If they were all destined to die and, the, and Peter was destined to be possessed by Paymon anyway, what the fuck was the point of the story then? To me, it's pointless. It's a pointless story to tell because if, if you know What's going to happen if everyone's going to die or everyone's going to be screwed or everyone's going to be fucked? Why, why watch it? Why, why is this a story that needs to be told? And I mean, I will say this about the film. 
like I said earlier in this video, there were things about this, a lot of things that I liked. The art direction and production design is fantastic. I love the use of the miniatures. I thought that was really cool. But then again, it seems like it's setting up for something that would end up being incorporated in the finale or as a bigger part of the film. But ultimately, all it really is is, is just window dressing because it doesn't really add that much to the film and at the end of the day because Annie just destroys them all in the end anyway. And I guess you can make the argument, well, that re represents her final descent into madness. All right, okay, fine. But I just feel that those miniatures were a really cool and clever way to kind of build the story, and I just felt they could have done more with that. The cinematography by Powell uh, Pogo, Pogo Rosaleski is absolutely gorgeous on more than one occasion. Uh, he does a great job with the lighting and and it's just a really visually impressive film on more than one occasion. I have to be honest, it, it does look good. Shots are set up well. He uh, works well with, with Ari. And the editing by Jennifer Lame and Lucian Johnston, for the most part, is pretty solid. The score, though, by Colin Stetson, I didn't really, I don't remember a single note. And all I remember from the score off the top of my head is just a bunch of droning noises. It's one of those scores that a lot of horror films have been trying to use lately that is just there for atmosphere. It's not there to do anything else. And honestly, I think it's kind of cheap. It's like you can't really build the atmosphere and the mood you want with your lighting or cinematography or your writing. So you have to have this atmospheric droning score in the background. And it just, it just falls flat to me. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't think of that many instances where this particular approach for a horror score has worked. Especially with modern horror. It doesn't do anything for me. It, it might as well just be nothing. You might as well just play no score. Because that's, that's as effective as the score is. The film is 127 minutes and it's way too long. Um, it, it feels like it's 227 minutes because of those crippling fatal flaws that I mentioned multiple times in this video characters that aren't likable and or or they don't really have that much charisma or personality see when you have boring characters and a slow pace you have a boring movie I'm sorry I, I get subtext only goes so far for me subtext to me is overrated I'll probably get people give me shit for it, whatever. I'd rather be honest and stick to my guns than lie. That's my honest feelings on subtext. It's overrated. It does, most of the time, it does absolutely nothing to help the story. It's essentially just there to be like, oh, wow, look at that. That's interesting. It poses some questions in your mind. It makes it so you can have the opportunity to write some quality essays about it and have for film studies teachers and theorists and and other people to be able to opine about them and talk about how the film talks about more deeper social issues and is more than just a movie and I get it but for me personally the, they're they're nowhere near the most important aspects of filmmaking or any form of storytelling. They're interesting, they're worth it because it does. In there there are films that have a lot of subtext that still wind up making you think, but at the same time also entertain you. And I didn't feel this is one of those movies. It's not that I didn't get the film or I didn't see the subtext I saw the subtext but I didn't care if I don't have characters that I can latch on to or care about what happens to them or care about what their place is in the story among the subtext the subtext is is, is it all it is 
is aesthetics. It's, it's, that's it. It's just aesthetics. Just like direction and cinematography and all these technical elements in this movie. They're aesthetics. They're awesome. And, I, I mean, that that's just my thing. It's like, I, I really honestly do not feel that those elements by themselves can just vault a film into mythic great status. I need more from a film than that. But that's just me personally. And I know there's a lot of people who are fine with that. And that's cool. That's, you know, I don't have any issue with that. But I do have the issue with people who tend to like this film, who, who like to talk down to people who don't. Like, they don't get the movie. Or, oh, they don't like it because it made them think. Or they don't like it because it wasn't a slasher movie with a guy in a mask. First off, that criticism is beyond idiotic because I can't think of a single person who has seen this movie, the trailers, the advertisements, looked at the DVD and Blu-ray cover and read the back of the box who said, wow, this is a slasher movie. That's just a, such an asinine argument to make. No one I know thinks like that when they decide to sit down and watch this movie. So why are you making that argument? It makes you look like a dumbass. It doesn't make you look smart. It makes you look stupid. Second, if it's so deep and it's so high above every other form of horror cinema this year or ever, then explain why it is. I am sick and tired of seeing people who praise films like Hereditary or The Witch or so on and so forth who like to talk down to people who weren't a fan of the movie with tr the, this really inane argument that's disrespectful and then at the same time they don't even know what they're talking about. So if you can't explain in words what makes this film so deep and so thought provoking then you shouldn't be talking down to other people. Period. End of discussion. And I'm probably going to get some people doing it in the comments section. But you know what? I've actually had some respectful discussions about this film on message boards, which is shocking. Where people have provided their opinions. Who have provided their ideas and their thought processes on why the film is deep and, and why the subtext matters and what the subtext is and that's awesome i love that i love a great discussion about a film even if it's a movie i don't like what i don't like is people shouting down or shouting at other people or talking down to them because they're not precisely on their level or on their wavelength but yeah, I, when it comes to this movie, I mean, it's just one of those films that had potential and blew it. All this movie needed was one character, one character that made it worth it in the end. If the character of Peter was actually tolerable, this film would be okay. That's how great the other elements of the film are. All it needed was that. One character. And it couldn't even provide that. It couldn't even give me that. Instead it gives me... Not much of anything. There are a couple creepy scenes. But nothing that really made me go... Oh my god, wow, that's, that's intense. Or that's scary. Or that's... Oh man, that really... That really unnerved me. I mean, there's a little bit of some insanity at the end that's quite inspired and I give the film credit for but it's not as effective as it could be because Peter's a character who's a prick who I do not care I don't care if he gets barbed wire wrapped around his neck and decapitated and they bowl with his fucking head I don't give a shit don't care and the supernatural elements I felt were pretty hacky and pretty silly and they didn't really mesh well with the rest of the movie if you ask me this should have just been a straightforward psychological thriller that deals with the real life horror 
of hereditary mental illness. That's terrifying. That's some real shit right there. And it looked like it might have been sort of going that route. And then it goes with naked demon cult shit in the end. And, and fucking Peter looking like Jughead from Archie with his fucking crown on his head. It's laughable. And I, I felt the supernatural elements in this were laughable. They weren't effective. They were laughable. And a big and a large part is because the film took itself so seriously. If you're gonna be this serious, then don't have supernatural elements like a naked fucking demon cult and jughead and overly complicated bullshit fucking plots. I mean, honestly, if this cult just needed Charlie to die, then they, why did they have to kill her in this overly complicated way? It, it just sounds like the screenwriter Ari Oster was just over complicating his own plot for no reason other than to be like, well, look at, look at me. Look how deep this is. It's about as deep as a fucking thumbnail. Especially that fucking aspect. The ending of this movie. I've heard people praise this because it did its research. Wow, here's a golf clap. You did demon research. You researched demonology for your film. Nice job. Thank you. <laughs> that should be a given. I'm just, you know, it's just one of those films where... I'm just not a fan of it. I'm not, as you can see. There are things about it that I liked, but there were some really crucial parts of it that I outright hated. And it brought the film down. It made the film fall flat on its ass. And I personally... I mean... When it comes to this movie, if you're curious about it, I guess give it a watch. I mean, who knows? Maybe you'll like it more than me. But if anything that I've been telling you sounds like it's not your idea of a good time or does not sound like something that you feel is worth watching, I would definitely recommend avoiding it. Because although there are some impressive technical elements and there are some really amazing aesthetics, it just fails on characters and story elements. It, it just has a, a poor story and poor characters. And no film can really survive that. No matter how impressive it is aesthetically. And yeah. That's honestly my thoughts on Hereditary. I don't know what else to say about the movie. I've already talked talked your ear, ear off about it. Probably pissed off a bunch of other people. Whatever it is, what it is. That's what happens when you share your opinion on the internet. Like I said, I'd rather be honest and say however I truly feel about any film than sit here and try to bullshit you. And this is no bullshit, folks. This is this is reality. I'm being super real with you. I thought this this was a below average horror film, and it it was it was a letdown because of the fact that not because of the the hype, but because of the fact that. There were some really impressive things to it. There were some great things in this movie, but they weren't quality enough to overcome the substandard writing and substandard characters. Just goes to show you that what horror needs more than anything nowadays is likable, charismatic, relatable characters to make the horror horrifying, to make the suspense suspenseful. Because without those things, you just have a horror movie that's honestly pretty horrible in a lot of ways because there's no horror and there's no suspense. You need characters. They're important. They're not just pawns and they're not just immaterial things in a film. You need characters. Not just to move the story along. You need them to connect with an audience. 
And whether that's through character development or through their personality or a combination of those things, it still stands true that you need them and they need to be effective. You can't be lazy with characters. And I'm seeing that a lot in horror films lately. And I don't get it. I don't understand. But that seems to be a trend. It seems to be like mood and atmosphere and the aesthetics first. Characters and story second and third. And for me personally, that's just not a very effective way to make a movie period, let alone a horror film. But yeah, if I were, if I were to rate it out of five stars, I give it two. It's your typical two out of five star flick that has some some aspects to it that are all inspiring at times and are definitely worth mentioning. But when it comes to crucial points, crucial elements, crucial aspects of of filmmaking of storytelling, it just it just can't muster. It can't hold up. It, it just it just collapses. Those those elements are so the foundation is your story and your characters. And in Hereditary, the foundation was weak. It's made out of rotting wood, and the film just collapsed because of it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and as always, I will see you later. See ya.